Yo, what is going on everybody? It's Juan Solo here with A-Squad Gaming and welcome back to the channel. Thank you all so much for tuning in today for some more State of Decay 2. So first off, before we actually jump into the video, guys, I will apologize for my voice. My allergies have just been kicking my butt over the weekend. I actually had to do some dog sitting over the weekend and uh, I found out that I'm allergic to dogs, so it has been a little bit rough this morning. But uh, we're going to jump into all of the new information surrounding the new Heartland DLC for State of Decay 2. So for those of you guys that don't know what that is, it's sort of like the Trumbull Valley DLC, but there's much, much much more involved in the actual DLC itself. So without further ado guys, we're going to jump down into some main points of what this DLC is, and then we're going to be going down through the patch notes. So first things first, it says welcome to the Heartland. So State of Decay 2 Heartland features a return to the Trumbull Valley map in a new story based adventure. So it's going to be more story driven than the survival driven, I guess you could say of just kind of what's going on with the rest of State of Decay 2. There is a little bit more story involved this time around. So once the iconic site of the original State of Decay game, the towns of Spencer's Mill and Marshall are now overrun with an advanced form of blood plague zombies so a more aggressive and far deadlier version than exists anywhere else so these zombies are going to be even tougher than the actual ones that we've played with in state of decay 2 though it may be familiar territory to those who homesteaded here years ago trumbull valley is packed with new dangers and unspeakable horrors so right there out of the gate i'm loving the way they're going to be doing this dlc now moving on it says the past is never dead so it says in heartland players choose from two sets of starting characters who have traveled to trumbull valley for different reasons both pairs of survivors are on a mission to find people important to them characters who appeared in the original state of decay that is huge we're going to be going basically questing out to find original members of the state of decay franchise so players must also find and recruit crucial handcrafted characters in order to build a strong community they can also claim the beloved jurassic junction as their home site and build the biggest base yet blending nostalgia with new features so what more could you ask for? You know, returning to State of Decay 1's map, you're going to have a story-driven DLC. You're going to be able to go back to the Jurassic Junction and have it actually be much bigger than it was in the original game. You know, what more can you really ask for? So now moving down into some of the key features here. So obviously, new map, explore Trumbull Valley, the site of the original State of Decay game. It is narrative-driven single-player adventure with branching storylines. So basically, what we wanted to see in State of Decay 2 is going to be in this DLC. So I'm really excited about that. Also, it says to choose your heroes, Heartland features two starting pairs of survivors. So Quincy, an ex-con member of the network, and his partner Helena, that is the first group you can choose from. And then Larice, the long-lost daughter of Mickey Wilkerson and her aunt Fiona. Those are the two, you know, sets of characters that you can choose from. And it says that custom characters, including recruitable survivors, will be along your path. As well as you can claim your base at the Jurassic Junction, the largest home site in the franchise. All Blood Plague Freaks, Blood Plague Screamers, Ferals, Juggernauts, and Bloaters are going to be featured in this DLC and also it says that there are over eight hours of story focused gameplay accumulating in the gauntlet which is a grueling challenge that requires skill and strategy to overcome and then also it provides answers players have wanted since the launch of the original game so a lot of the things in this DLC is gonna tie right back around to the original game where we actually had a bunch of unanswered things at the end of the first state of decay some of that is actually gonna be tied up in this DLC so I'm really looking forward to playing through this. You know, we finally got a story-driven DLC for State of Decay 2, and then it's going to tie into everything from the first game. And then also with this, there's going to be 500 new gamer score worth of achievements in this DLC. And for those of you guys that did not know, I actually called this in my video that I put up the other day talking about, you know, State of Decay 2 being at E3. This DLC is available now. When they revealed it yesterday at E3, it went live basically as soon as the trailer was over, the DLC was live. So this is really cool. You know, it basically was retroactive. You could basically, as soon as that trailer went live, you could jump over, download it. The only catch is, is it's not free. So for instance, if you guys own the Xbox Game Pass, it is free. You guys can play it through the Xbox Game Pass. If you don't have access to the Xbox Game Pass, it's going to cost you roughly $10. I believe it's like $9.99. And for some reason, I had a little bit of trouble this morning actually trying to get it to boot up on my PC. You you know, so State of Decay 2 is a play anywhere game. You should be able to play it on Xbox, play it on PC. But all the gameplay you guys are actually watching in the background from the DLC is actually running on the Xbox One X because it would not let me boot this up on my PC. It said it wasn't compatible or something like that. So now moving on to the patch notes. So in addition to the Heartland DLC, Undead Labs did say that they've also made a few free upgrades to the State of Decay 2 experience. So first things first is the inventory. So they expanded the range of actions that you can actually perform in your inventory in different contexts. So while in a vehicle, you can now drop items and break open rucksacks while you're actually in the vehicle itself. And then while looting a container, you can now unequip your weapon or a weapon mod while you're actually looting the container. You don't have to like stop the action. 
And then also while in your supply locker, you can now repair or salvage items in your personal inventory. And then while your trade interface is open, you can now unequip items. So they're basically making it so you don't have to stop all of your actions to do other actions. You're basically going to be able to do those simultaneously. Now moving on to the blood plague. So curing a survivor's blood plague is now more user friendly. So you can now treat survivors who are merely fighting an infection before they develop full blown blood plague. And then when you talk to an infected survivor, you have a new view treatment options so that it makes it that it reveals how long they have left to live. And then after you select that action, the usual exile, euthanize, administered, you know, those, those options appear and they work just as they did before. And then also if you have the cure in your inventory, you'll use it to cure them. And if you don't, you'll see an option to use a cure from their inventory. So you don't necessarily have to switch over to another survivor that has that in their inventory. And then also if you decide not to act on their infection, you can back out of the original set of dialogue actions like enlist follower and switch to this character there was a few bugs and other things that they actually fixed with this dlc but i will link all of the patch notes and details down in the description below so you guys can check it out for yourselves as well as there is a heartlands players guide which basically you can kind of go in and get full detail of what the heartland dlc is way beyond everything that i covered in this video and i will also link that down in the description below but that's pretty much all for the video guys brand new dlc a story driven dlc for state of decay 2 that ties back into the core features of state of decay 1 and it's going to end answer some of our long lost questions of the first game you know what more could we be excited about you know and like I said in my video the other day what bigger of a stage to showcase this than on the E3 stage and I actually tweeted this out over on Twitter and there was actually a, quite a few State of Decay fans and stuff like that that were you know saying that uh, until it's confirmed by Undead Labs you know don't think they're going to be there that kind of stuff well we got a brand new story driven DLC what more can we ask for but like I said that's all for the video if you guys enjoyed it you guys are excited about the new Heartland DLC for State of Decay 2 make sure to drop a like on the video and also subscribe if you are new I am probably going to be putting up a few videos on this playing through it maybe doing some Easter eggs and stuff like that so make sure to stay tuned for that but that's all for the video now thank you all so much for watching and I will catch you guys later peace out